Good morning and welcome to This Week. Late Friday night, America lost the last president of the greatest generation. George H.W. Bush, America's 41st president. His final words, I love you too, for America's 43rd president, his son, George W. His lifetime of service capped by a single term as president, that loss which hit so hard in the moment, redeemed by grace and defeat, and wisdom revealed by history. The 20-year-old fighter pilot shot down in World War II, executed a soft landing to the Cold War as president, a singular achievement of a remarkable man. America will remember and celebrate President Bush all this week with the civic rituals he revered at the Capitol the National Cathedral, then a last journey home to Texas. And we begin this morning with his closest friend, the tennis partner who went on to manage all of George Bush's campaigns, became his White House Chief of Staff and Secretary of State. James Baker, welcome to This Week. Mr. Secretary, I know you had the priv privilege of sharing those final days and hours with President Bush. What can you share about that? Well, uh, the president had a very gentle and peaceful passing, but uh, he, he surprised us. He, he kept surprising us throughout his illness because he would, he would uh, get sick. They'd put him in the hospital. He'd bounce back. That happened for five or, five or six years, I think. He had a, a form of Parkinsonism that prevented him from uh, getting rid of a lot of fluids, and they would build up, and they'd uh, impact his lungs adversely. So he went through a lot of that, uh, and then, but he really wanted to to uh, live long enough to get back to his summer home in Kenny Bunkport this last summer, which he did. And then he wanted to live long enough to get back to his home here in Houston, which he did. Uh, but he began to go downhill a little bit uh, and rather rapidly after that. He. Uh, he hadn't eaten for three or four days uh, last Friday, by, by last Friday, and I live fairly close to him, and, and I go over there a fair amount. So I went over uh, Friday morning at 7.15. He hadn't eaten for three days, uh, and one of his aides uh, said, uh, Mr. President, Secretary Baker's here. Well, he, he bounced up. He, bounced, he, he perked up. He opened his eyes. He looked at me and said, Hey, Bake, he said, where are we going? So he kept his spirit and he kept his sense of humor right till the very end. But his passing, George, was very gentle and very peaceful. And uh, he had mem members of his family there. And Susan and I were there and, and uh, others, uh, Gene Becker, yeah. his chief of staff and, and the doctor. That, so. that is a, a blessing. And, and I guess you also had the blessing of friendship with him for so long. Have you ever imagined how different both your lives would have been had you not met? Well, I've certainly imagined how different my life would have been <laughs> had, had, had he not been my friend. Uh, you know, uh, I, I never intended to get into politics and public service, George. I, I was a lawyer in Houston, Texas. I was content to continue that. Then I lost my wife to cancer at the age of 38, and Barbara and George were the last people to come see her other than family before she died. And uh, George wanted. George came to me and said, "You know, you need to take your mind off your grief. How about helping me run for the Senate here in in Texas?" I said, "Well, George, that's a great idea, except for two things. Number one, I don't know anything about politics. I was sort of apolitical. And number two, I'm a Democrat." He said, "Well, he said we can we can cure that latter problem, and and we did. I, and I I changed parties and helped him in that Senate race." And uh, from there on out, it was an extraordinarily uh, warm and close friendship. And as you said, I think in your introduction, I did, uh, I did lead all of his campaigns for president. We became extraordinarily close. And then he, he uh, gave me the privilege of serving as Secretary of State uh, of this wonderful country of ours at a time of fundamental change. Uh, at a, uh, his presidency from a foreign policy standpoint, George, was such a consequential president. I mean, I, I could go back and, and uh, check off all the things that happened, but it was a time of fundamental and radical change And there's no the question world. he go will ahead. be remembered and you will be remembered for how you manage that situation. I know that in a conversation with John Meacham, the president w said that, very matter-of-factly, that he's just going to be an asterisk in history. No, no. I don't, I don't agree with that. Yes, he's a, he's a one-term president. Uh, but uh, thanks to you guys involuntarily retiring us from public service, but 
he is going to be and was a very consequential one-term president, and I would argue far and away the best one-term president we've ever had, and such a good one that he was, uh, in my view, one of the very best presidents and of all time. And he really got a lot done, and he did it with great skill, and he knew foreign policy, he understood it, he managed the end of the Cold War peacefully, it ended with a whimper, not a bang, and then he did all those other things. Historians are coming around to that view. Which single memory of President Bush will you cherish the most? Uh, I suppose one of the most vivid memories I have is is sitting in his suite uh, at the 1980 Republican convention when it looked like uh, Governor Reagan, who, had re who was going to get the nomination, was going to pick Jerry Ford, my old boss. I had, I had been Ford's chairman in the campaign against Carter in 76. Looked like he was going to come back maybe as vice president for Governor Reagan, for President Reagan. And we were sitting there, but we're the only, uh, we were the only opponent of Governor Reagan in that primary that had any delegates. And we had, we had a st fairly substantial number of delegates. And uh, the phone rang, and a voice said, is uh, Ambassador Bush there for Governor Reagan? And I answered the phone, and that was, that was the moment that I think, uh, the, had that not happened, I really, uh, I really am convinced there would never have been a uh, for, uh, Bush 41 presidency. And if that hadn't happened, there probably would never have been a Bush 43 president. Change the course of history. Mr. Secretary, thanks yeah. for joining us this morning. Yeah. Thank you, George.